Hi, uh, so I'm Zoltan Shimon. I'm from the Budapest University of Technology and Economics. Uh, and I would like to give you a brief introduction to my graphics engine called Homebrew Graphics Engine, or uh, HOGRA, uh, as I also call it. <laughs> as an uh, overview, first I will motivate my work, then I will uh, provide a brief uh, insight into the architecture, and I will also uh, uh, show you one project using this engine, and finally conclude my work. My motivation as a computer engineering student uh, who is also interested in uh, computer graphics is very trivial uh, since com uh, so graphics engines are uh, fairly convoluted and complex systems uh, and I was always fascinated by these engines uh, not only from a uh, graphics uh, point of view but also that these are uh, really interesting uh, systems uh, regarding the uh, architectural patterns used in them. Uh, one might ask whether it's even feasible to create another engine since there are so many great engines out there. For example, there is Unity, Unreal Engine, but it's worth, worth also mentioning uh, Godot, which is an open source engine, and uh, finally also Hazel Engine, uh, which is another like, uh, op uh, kind of uh, like uh, uh, GitHub, so it's a GitHub project. Uh, uh, the creator of Hazel, Jan Chernikov, is also uh, regularly uploading devlogs uh, onto his YouTube channel, so it's really worth checking it out if you haven't already. Uh, I, I can only recommend. So I was thinking to myself, maybe by creating my own, en own engine I can learn a lot about uh, graphics programming and also about uh, graphics engines in general. And also, maybe I can share this knowledge with others uh, by providing this engine as a reference implementation for others uh, who also learn about graphics. Uh, and also, maybe they can use it for their own uh, research projects as a platform, and also to create simple games for maybe a game jam or other things. Mm. Let's look into the architecture of this. Um, I won't be able to talk about all of, all of these uh, parts, uh, but it's worth mentioning that it has, uh, like for example, shadow maps, with, uh, omnidirectional shadow casting, PBR materials. Uh, we ship IM GUI with this engine by default, and also you can describe most of the part of the scenes in a JSON file. Uh, by the way, in the background you can see a, a falling stand simulation also implemented in this engine. The layer system. Uh, what is this exactly? Uh, so let's imagine that you want to create a complex scene where you have a lot of things, but first of all, you want to have a skybox. So for this, you could use a forward layer without instancing. Uh, forward layer, since it's, uh, it's quite easy to, to calculate a, a skybox, you only need to sample from a, a cube texture, and uh, no instancing because there's only one uh, skybox at a time. Let's go further, and you also want to add other objects into the uh, scene. These objects share the same geometry and material, uh, but it, these have a little. So uh, these have a very simple shading model. So you can use a forward layer with instancing this time. Let's go further. Add more objects. These objects uh, also share uh, geometries, also uh, uh, materials. But these materials are much more uh, computationally expensive ones, uh, so these are used PBR materials. For this, it's worth to uh, defer the actual lighting computations uh, for the last moment, where you know which uh, pixels are actually visible on the screen. So for this one, you can use this different, types, uh, di different type of uh, pipeline. And finally, maybe you also want to add some text on the screen. Uh, by the way, our engine also uh, supports uh, Unicode text uh, with any uh, custom uh, font, so you can provide your TTF font and, and uh, it will work. Uh, these layers get composited on, uh, one of it, so, uh, on top of each other, uh, and each of them share the same camera tra so, uh, view transformation and projection. Um, and Finally, maybe we also want to add a post-process uh, mm, step where uh, we want to have this post-process effect affecting the uh, first three uh, layers, but not the fourth one. So you don't want to, uh, the post-process effect to affect the text rendering, only the, the objects and the skybox and, and so on. But uh, what is this post-process effect? So it can be really anything. 
for example, on the image, you can see, uh, not sh really sure, but uh, yeah, uh, it's a CRT uh, monitor uh, effect uh, applied on the scene. But by default, we provide a nice bloom effect, also tone mapping, and you can easily create your own uh, post-process effect by only writing a single fragment shader with the uh, specified inputs and outputs. Uh, let's just uh, look into how a bloom is calculated. First, you filter for the high radiance uh, pixels in the screen. Then you apply the actual bloom, so the uh, uh, hue bleed out the color. And finally, you add tone mapping to get the final image. Project using uh, my engine uh, actually, it's my, it was my BSC thesis project, uh, which is the volumetric renderer. Now, you can see that volumetric rendering is uh, quite different from, from the regular uh, pi pipeline of my engine, but uh, it fitted nicely into it, uh, because uh, it was actually rendered in a 2D, uh, 2D qu quad, and it was uh, fitted into the uh, other, uh, so the in the, in the uh, pipeline of the other things. Uh, we uh, visualize CT and MRI datasets, uh, and I this all happened in real time. Uh, we also calculated nice shadows using this uh, half angle slicing technique. On the following image, you can see uh, this application with the IMGUI uh, interface. Uh, as I mentioned, it is provided with the, with the engine. Well, IMGUI is another uh, open source project. Uh, this allows to create easy, uh, like uh, easily create uh, nice interfaces for uh, such applications, such as the visualization project, where you don't really want to uh, spend much time uh, programming the actual menu system. To conclude, I created a simple OpenGL uh, graphics engine. Uh, I, yes, I forget to mention actually that, that it's OpenGL, but uh, uh, it has a layered render system, which allows uh, adding multiple layers, uh, which gets composited, and uh, you can s uh, so uh, combine many different pipelines. Uh, and it can be used as a reference implementation uh, for educational purposes for others, and to uh, and to uh, implement their own ref like research projects in it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. So we have time for some questions. Are there any questions from the audience? Yes. So you had the picture of a volumetrically rendered skull. Yes. I'll go back to that one. Yes. Uh, so. How do you achieve that the individual slices of the 3D texture are not visible? It's so nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. um, well, the simple answer is you need to have a lot, lot of slices. So uh, by having many slices, uh, you essentially get rid of these this, uh, like visible slices. And um, yeah, for example, for the school, you can actually see some patterns there, but it's uh, it's because of the data set. It's a, a quite a low resolution uh, data set. Um, it actually, it's, it, it's the same data set, both of the images, because uh, it only it with uh, yeah. uh, different um, like transfer function. Mm, yeah. So so yeah, and also we we, we use uh, some um, like filtering filtering for it because the data set is a low resolution but you have to filter to to achieve uh, smooth uh, like uh, surfaces as well uh, are you using trilinear filtering yeah trilinear but also my supervisor advised uh, uh, another method which uh, which builds upon uh, trilinear filtering uh, this is uh, his own uh, publication uh, which uh, allows the better like uh, this, uh, the quality of this output is actually comparable to uh, more computationally expensive um, methods, so uh, it, it uh, beats uh, classic trainer filtering. How many samples per uh, ray do you use? Uh, sorry? How many samples per ray? Uh, well, it depends because it, uh, I cannot say exact numbers because uh, it also depends on the uh, view angle because if you, uh, for example, this half angle slicing uh, uh, means that uh, the, the slices are, are uh, 
differ in in angle between so the angle between the normal of the surfaces and the view uh, vector is 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 different in each uh, view direction so so this means that you have to alter the number of slices to to again to prevent this uh, s uh, visible slices any other questions so you said that you are also doing text rendering and I'd like to know how far did you go mm -hmm. so text rendering like you can go yeah. crazy with <laughs> kerning with um, yeah, yeah. anti-aliasing with mm -hmm. different font sizes so how far did you go yeah actually uh, not so far but uh, as you mentioned anti-aliasing uh, I, I, I plan to uh, like uh, look into that uh, I saw some very nice uh, algorithms that can uh, like upscale essentially the uh, font so I even if you zoom into it with a uh, lower resolution texture of fonts uh, you can still get nice uh, 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 results but uh, right now we don't do that uh, we only uh, read, li read the um, font then we uh, depending on the uh, text you are want to write you you select those those letters from it you render it to one texture uh, you uh, obviously you use these um, parameters of the font which de determine how, uh, how uh, big place you need to have between the fonts and how should you align the different fonts uh, or uh, like uh, characters and uh, yeah you render into the texture and uh, then you only use that texture as a, as a static uh, image to to display it on the screen and uh, yeah we have some uh, uh, functionality for for alignment so you can align to the center to the left to the right um, but uh, yeah, we will develop it further. Okay, thank you. Last question. Thank you. Uh, yeah, actually, I had a question that was partially answered, but uh, you know, my question was whether you want to develop the engine further, and if yes, in which particular directions you would like to mm -hmm. go. Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, Right now, I think uh, um, I would like to to port it actually to uh, Vulkan <laughs> uh, because I said it, it's now it's in OpenGL. Uh, but I I think that uh, uh, to uh, make further development, it would be uh, the best to uh, port to Vulkan. Uh, also, it would be uh, it would allow to uh, use multi-threading because right now it's uh, it yeah it's, it's a single-threaded application. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm. This this would be the, the main thing. Other than that, um, yeah, it, it's yeah. For example, mm, depth of field effect should be nice, uh, and uh, we we don't have it currently. But uh, I'm planning on uh, investing that as well. Okay, thank you, Sultan, for your nice poster presentation. Thank you. Next up.